So we're entering a unit where we're going to be studying forces. I think you're going to enjoy this unit because forces are the cause of anything interesting in motion. They're the cause of accelerations. Back when we were just studying one-dimensional constant velocity motion, it was pretty easy to understand, but it was kind of boring. So if we want to understand complex things like why does stuff fly through the air, what does it mean to go into orbit, why does the uh, Earth move the way it does in the solar system, we got to understand changes in velocities, and those are called by, caused by forces. So the generic definition of a force, and we're going to see a whole bunch of them today, is any sort of push or pull. And right now, we've only really looked at gravity, and we've seen how it's affected a falling object. Now, gravity, the force of gravity in everyday life is usually caused called weight. So what I want to do before we even get into other pushes or pulls, I want to make sure we understand the difference between the force of gravity, which is how hard the Earth is pulling us, and another related concept called mass. These things together are going to make up the, the bulk of this unit. So here's a couple more definitions. Weight, the force of gravity, is literally how hard the Earth is pulling on you. Mass, in chemistry you've learned it as a measure of how much material you've got. And it's kind of like that in physics as well. But it's this other thing too that we call inertia. And inertia is a fancy sounding word, but it's just Greek for laziness. And what inertia is, what mass is, is how hard is it to change something's motion. To try to show you what the difference is, I've got three one kilogram masses. This one's hanging from a spring. This one's hanging from a, a scale, which actually means it's hanging from a spring as well. And this one's sitting on a scale. Um, and we're going to talk about the different situations that they're in. At its fundamental level, mass actually means inertia. Inertia is a Greek word that means laziness. So something that has more mass is lazier. What do I mean by that? Watch what happens when I set this one kilogram mass into motion by giving it a tug. It bobs up and down. The spring's not able to instantly make it snap back and forth. It takes a little bit of effort. Look what happens when I replace it with a smaller 500 gram mass. The spring has a much easier time making it move. So we say that the one kilogram mass, the bigger one, had more laziness. It was moving and the spring had a harder time getting to, to change its motion. And that's the fundamental meaning of mass. Mass is a property that does not change no matter where in the universe you go. We could repeat this experiment on the moon, uh, on Mars. Anywhere that there was uh, a spring set up like this, and we would get the same results. This one would wobble, and it would take longer for it to change its motion than this one. So, what's weight? Weight is simply a force. And weight is how much a gravity field is pulling on you. So, the Earth has a gravity field. You could look at all of these kilograms as being pulled downwards. So it's just another pull, and it gets treated uh, like any other pull and gets added up with our other forces and treated separately. Weight is not universal. If I took these weight uh, masses to a different place, like the moon, the moon would pull them less because the gravity is not as strong on the moon. So mass ends up being a much more fundamental property. One last thing to say why we've got these scales set up. Scales actually don't measure weight. Uh, the way a scale works is it actually balances the weight, which I've got 
drawn here as FG with another force. A spring scale like the one that you can currently see, it reads how much something weighs by stretching a spring and it actually is getting the tension in that spring. This spring scale. There's literally a spring and the more you pull on it, the more it pulls back on you. So it's actually not measuring the weight, it's measuring how much this spring is stretched. And it actually is getting the tension in that spring. And that's the number you're seeing displayed on that scale. A uh, scale like this, or like the bathroom scale and back, that works a little bit differently. In that case, we are putting an upward force as well, but it's actually the force of the uh, scale pushing upwards. It's not pulling up, it's pushing up. And that's a, called a normal force, just like the force of something sitting on a table. The bottom line is whether we're measuring mass or weight, in reality on Earth we're always measuring weight. The scales are always measuring how hard the Earth is pulling these objects. Because mass and weight are directly proportional on Earth, the force of gravity equals the mass times 9.8. You just have to change the numbers on the dial, whether you're going between, you're going for mass or whether you're going for weight. So we'll look at these scales and we'll see that. The uh, postal type scale, its dial is in pounds and ounces, and those are measures of weight. But you can see I've put conversion factors on there to turn them into mass. You just multiply by a number. That's even more obvious on the small spring scale. It's got grams and newtons. Grams is mass, newtons is weight. And you can see that there's just two different rulers and you just read what the needle's pointing at for that scale. This last one is an old scale. It's got two weight units, newtons and dynes. Dynes is an obsolete unit that we don't use anymore. But this is a really good scale, so that's why it's here. So there's another reason that sometimes people confuse mass and weight. And it has to do with the different measurement systems that we have. So I want to go to a grocery store, and I want to look at the scale we use for determining how many apples or peppers or potatoes you buy. We'll take a look at the units. So here's a bag of apples I bought, and as you can see, it's sold both in pounds for the U.S. market and kilograms for the Canadian market. And that's a source of confusion, because as we've seen, pounds is a measure of weight, how hard the earth is pulling these apples, whereas kilograms is a measure of their inertia, how hard it is to change their motion. So I think you saw on there that there was pounds for measuring uh, using U.S. units and kilograms for measuring using metric units. Problem is those do not measure the same quantity. And a pound is a measure of how much the earth is pulling on your bag of apples. If the earth pulls on it harder, you pay more. Pulls on it less, you pay less. And that's a good way to sell apples because the more apples you've got, the more the earth is going to pull. But the earth matters when it comes to weight. You would never do this, but what if you took your apples up to a checkout counter on the moon? You get the same number of apples, but they would weigh a lot less. That doesn't matter for, for this topic, but for a lot of things that go to very different places in the universe, it's a really important difference. Also, how weight affects something is going to be different than how mass affects. I don't have a weight of a pound, but this brass cylinder is 500 grams. It's a little bit bigger than a pound. And here's the confusing thing. In other countries, they don't consider the weight all that important. They look at the more intrinsic property of mass. So if you go to buy apples in Canada, they're going to charge you by the kilogram. which is abbreviated KG. And I have my nice kilogram here. So 
that bag of apples, although it has a different weight in, on the Earth and on the moon and things like that, it would actually have the same mass. Notice that the kilogram is substantially bigger, about twice as big as the pound. Again, the difference is mass is a measure of laziness. It's how easy or hard it is to change something's motion. So there's two other units we should learn. Um, we should learn the metric SI unit that we're going to use in class for, for weight or for all forces. It's called the Newton. And one newton, or one pound, is 4.448 newtons. So a newton's about a quarter pound. In class, you'll see this little foam apple. Everyone can toss it around. It weighs a newton. Also, think of a quarter pounder with cheese. That's a newton. Um, we'll use that all the time. There's another unit, obviously, the US unit for mass. There's a couple different ones you can put in here. Uh, one's called the slug. There's also the pound mass. You might run into those if you become an engineer. But bottom line is we have one unit to distinguish inertia. We have another unit to distinguish uh, the force of how hard something's pulling. It's important to keep them separate.